Okay, so this is a set of notes on the Graham Schmidt orthonormalization process. It's one of the favorite things for me to say in mathematics. Uh, in order to kind of lead up to that, we're going to start with a little bit of a theorem that, oh, that's awful. Let's see if I can write better. Theorem, there we go, that actually makes creating an orthonormal basis somewhat useful. So let's say that B is a set of V1, V2 out to Vn, and that it is an orthonormal basis for V. Uh, v is an inner product space, right? And we're going to say that there exists W, which is going to be in V, which is going to be C1 times V1 plus C2 times V2 out to C n times v n because if w is in v then the argument here is that it should be a um, linear combination of the vectors in the basis b right because b is a basis that's what it means i can span b to get everything that's in v all right so here's the wicked part so if this is in fact an orthonormal basis then finding these coefficients is actually really easy. I just take the inner product of W with the vector that I need the coefficient for. Whoa, that seems a little too easy to get these coefficients. This only works though if I have an orthonormal basis. All right, so we're actually gonna prove that because it doesn't seem like it should work, but it does. All right, so to prove this, we're of course gonna let W equal C1 V1 plus C2 V2 out to Cn V n. Okay, and then we're gonna look at the inner product of W and one of these Vs. Okay, so this is the inner product of C1 V1 plus C2 V2 out to C N V N with oops V sub I right so I get that inner product so a little bit of like factoring and distributing here and that's gonna give me C1 times V1 V I plus C2 times V2 times V I and I keep carrying this all the way out to Cn times Vn times Vi. Okay, but because this thing is orthogonal, um, Vi or Vj comma Vi is equal to zero when I does not equal j. Likewise, if I take vi comma vi, I get one because it's orthonormal. All right, so what does this mean? This means that w times vi is equal to, well, ci times vi times vi. Well, okay, but VI times VI is just one, so I get CI is equal to W times VI, which is what I was trying to prove. Boom, that's it, right? Uh, so that's like kind of nifty and useful, but the problem is is that like orthonormal bases don't just like fall from the sky. Um, they have to be kind of earned a bit. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to develop a process called the Gram-Schmidt orthonormalization process that will actually be able to create, given any basis for the vector space, an orthonormal basis. Okay, so 
First, let's just see how this thing played out in an example here. So, hold on. So, using the theorem that we just wrote, uh, let's get an orthonormal basis for R3. Uh, let's see. Three-fifths, four-fifths, zero. Um, negative four-fifths, three-fifths, zero. Uh, zero, zero, one is, in fact, an orthonormal basis for R3. You could check this, that all of these are orthogonal to each other, and they all have a magnitude of one. So, let's take our vector W and let it be 5, negative 5, 2. Then we're going to take W times V1, which is the first vector there, right? So we're going to take the dot product of these two, which is 5 times 3 fifths minus 5 times 4 fifths plus 2 times 0, which is 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So if I take W times V2, I go negative 5 times 3 fifths. Uh, uh, sorry, that's not right. Let's try this again. Uh, w is 5 times negative 4 fifths. There we go. Uh, plus, sorry, minus 5 times 3 fifths plus 2 times 0. Let's see, that's negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. And if I take W times V3, I get 0, or sorry, 5, let's keep it to form, 5 times 0 minus 5 times 0 uh, plus 2 times 1 is 2. So <clears throat> what we're saying here is that I can write 5, negative 5, 2 as the coefficients of these vectors, which would be negative 3 fifths, 4 fifths, 0, minus 7 times negative 4 fifths, 3 fifths, 0, plus 2 times 0, 0, 1, and you can check that that works. All right, so that's some of the ease of computation that results from having an orthonormal basis. However, creating an orthonormal basis is not simple. So this is why we have this Gram-Schmidt process. All right, so let's actually look at Gram-Schmidt. All right, so in Gram-Schmidt, we're gonna start off with some basis. It's just V1, V2, V2, out to Vn. And this is just a basis for some vector space V. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new basis B prime, which is W1, W2, out to Wn, and this is going to be orthogonal. Okay, so the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna get an orthogonality. All right, so the easiest thing to do here is just let W1 equal to V1. That's a good starting point. All right, and then W2 is going to equal V2, and then we're gonna subtract something. We're gonna subtract the inner product of V2 with W1 that we just found over W1 w1 and then we're going to multiply that times w1 and the argument is is that if you multiply this times w1 take the inner product of this w2 with that w1 it's going to come up as zero and you can go ahead and try that it'll work out so now we got to play w3 so here you're going to start with v3 and we're gonna do it like we did before. We're gonna take V3 times W1 over W1 times W1. And if you're kind of playing along at home here, 
Then we're going to do that again. We're going to subtract V3 times W2 over W2 times W2. And we're going to multiply that by the vector W2. And now this one, when you put it with both of these, is going to give you a dot product of zero. So the general case here is that the nth vector is equal to v sub n minus the sum from i equals 1 to n minus 1, one fewer, right, of v sub n w sub i over w sub i w sub i times w sub i. So we just keep subtracting these things until I have all of them, and then I'm good. And what I'll end up with there is now an orthogonal basis for V, which is like really, really close to what I want, but it's not what I really, really want. Oh gosh, there's like Spice Girls and orthogonalization here. All right, so um, let's take it to the next step. We have orthogonal orthogonal, we really, really want orthonormal. So how do I do that? Okay, um, for orthonormal, we're uh, going to look at creating yet another basis. So we're going to call this basis, so this would be step two in the process. We'll call this B double prime, and we'll call these things U1, U2, out to UN, right? And the way we do this is that we just let each of the UIs be equal to the WI that I just found in the orthogonal basis divided by its magnitude. Okay, because that's now going to give me, um, they're still going to be orthogonal, but now they're all just going to have a magnitude of 1. Okay, so we should probably work through at least one of these by hand. They're a little tedious. And... Um, and then we'll go from there. All right, so let's start with a basis for R3. So here's a basis for R3. 1, 1, 0, uh, 1, 2, 0, 0, then 0, 1, 2. And from stuff earlier in this course that you can see that that's going to be spanning, just build it into a matrix, and if you take the Gauss Jordan of that, you should get the identity. Okay? So, um, the easy move here is that, like, W1 in my orthogonal one is just going to be 1, 1, 0. So that was pretty simple. W2 is going to be 1, 2, 0 minus. So this is V2 w1 over w1 w1 right so this oh times w1 now if you go ahead and work that out um this fraction works out to be three halves and the w1 works out to be one one zero Right, so because that's one one zero, there it is. W one is one one zero, so this comes out to be um, negative one half, one half zero. So now I have two vectors, and these two are in fact orthogonal. If you take their dot product, you're going to get zero. So let's work out W three. So W three starts with the zero one two. It subtracts V3 W1 over W1 W1 times W1, right, minus V3 W2 over W2 W2 times W2. Okay, so this is 0, 1, 2. If you go ahead and do this one, the fraction up front here is going to be a half, and that's going to be times 1, 1, 
0, which is w1, this second fraction here actually works out to be a half over a half, which happens to be 1. And you're going to get negative a half, um, 1 half, 0, yeah? Because that's this guy here. And if you work that out and out, you should end up with um, 0, 0, 2. Okay, so this means that B prime, which is now 1, 1, 0, negative a half, 1 half, 0, 0, 0, 2 is now an orthogonal ma a basis. Um, I'm sorry, that's not correct. Um, no, that's correct. 0, 0, 2. That's now an orthogonal basis for R3. So I've gone from having a basis from R3 to an orthogonal basis. Okay, so let's clear out a little bit of space here. Oh, that's not how you clear things out. There we go. Boom, delete it. All right, so that's all good. And now we just have to find the U's, right? So U1 is going to be um, the vector. Uh, so it's going to be, let's see, the magnitude here is 1 over the square root of 2 times 1, 1, 0, which is now root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, 0. U2 is let's see this one works out to be also one over root two right so this is going to be now times negative a half one half zero so this guy works out to be uh i think negative root two over two uh root two over two zero. Sorry, this is just the square root of two, right? That's just the square root of two. Um, because it's going to be one over one over the square root of two, which is just the square root of two. That's how I'm getting this. So that should work. Um, and then u three. Well, let's see, this is going to be uh, one over two times zero, zero, two which gives me back zero, zero, one, right? So this means that this is B sub two, or B double prime gives me root two over two, root two over two, zero, negative root two over two, root two over two, zero, and then zero, zero, one, is orthonormal basis for R3. Now, of course, I'm not going to leave you hanging on this. Um, those of you who have stumbled into this video who are not part of our illustrious Garrison Forest community, um, well, send somebody to school and you'll get the code. But uh, for those of you who are, I have code posted on the Google Google Classroom that is relevant for this that will do this work you got to load it into matlab we're going to take a look at how that code works right now all right so in the google classroom is a piece of code for a method for matlab called grimeschmidt.m uh, it's something that i stumbled upon and i modified for use for this class um, and what you do is it'll work for rn so you create some matrix, let's call it V, right? And you put the three, or you put however many matrices you need, um, or vectors you need, into rows. So in our example problem, we had uh, the vector one, one, oops, zero. We have the vector one, two, zero. And we have the vector zero, one, two. So there it is. 
v that's the three rows are the three vectors in the basis that i started with and then what i do is i say take gram schmidt of v and boom the rows are now an orthonormal basis that's root 2 over 2 root 2 over 2 0 negative root 2 over 2 root 2 over 2 0 and 0 0 1 uh, we have an orthonormal basis so it's like boom but that's the whole point of having an algorithm is because you can machine it and get there much quicker okay um, that's it that's everything we got